Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillah, Sayyid al-Awwalin wa al-Akhirin wa ala alihi wa sahbatihi ajma'in. So we begin insha'Allah with the seventh hadith wa anhu wa narwihi bil asanid an Sayyidina Imam al-Nawwi, Riyad al-Salihin. وعن أبي هريرة وعنه قال عن أبي هريرة ويسأل أبي هريرة نا هريرتي بكس هريرة ممنوع من الصرف وممنوع من الصرف باجتماع اللتين في الكلمة two things happen in a word in this case is the name and ت تأنيث فعن أبي هريرة نا هريرتين so this this type of noun doesn't accept kasra, like fi suhufi Ibrahimi or fi suhufi Ibrahi ma. The mamnaq man asarf. Fa Abu Hurayrata radiyallahu anhu. His name has the feminine ta at the end, although that doesn't always mean feminine. Sometimes it means to emphasize. You say alama. Hada shaks alama tun. Sometimes ta'neeth bima'na al-mubalaga fi sifa to emphasize the quality. For Abu Huraira, this is called idafat to feed a luzum. Always he's with a cat. So he's called Abu Hurairata. And Hurairata is mabna' man asarf. Doesn't accept fat kasra, doesn't accept tanween. Like Ibrahim and so on and so on. Like Maryam. Ila akhiriha. رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله لا ينظر إلى أجسامكم ولا صوركم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وعمركم. This is the foundation of Islamic justice, social justice. We call it religious justice because justice isn't just for us. If we say social justice, that means only we we're looking for our own justice. But religious justice is what Allah has said is just. إن الله يأمركم بالعدل. Allah orders you with justice. Because without a religious component to justice, it becomes everyone's justice. Everyone has their own interpretation. Because human beings, that's how we are, man. We all have our own needs, our own wants. This hadith it says Allah subhanahu wa taala لا ينظر إلى أجسامكم ولا صوركم. He doesn't look at your bodies or your shapes. ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم. But he looks at your hearts and your deeds. This hadith is restricted by other hadith because if, for example, I were to get a tattoo of Carson Wentz on my back, your quarterback, the Commanders, whatever the name is now. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold me account, accountable for that. So it doesn't mean that I can do anything I want with my body. I can do anything I want with my physical shape. And Allah will not hold me accountable for that. Of course. But here this means, what we say, min al asal. From our color, the shapes that we have as human beings from our different cultures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yanduru ila hada. Allah doesn't look at that. In fact, Sheikh Dr. Hassan al-Shafi'i, he used to tell us, this is called what we call qa'idu takreem, the principle of honor, that the, 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 the principle of engaging people is that we should respect them no matter who they are. Because Allah says in the Qur'an, after a'udhu bilayhi min shaitan rajim, wa laqad karramna bani adam. Like we honored all people. So maybe somebody reads this hadith, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ Oh, I can, you know, get rid of my nose or do something to myself. And of course, it's going to bring up the question of plastic surgery. You can ask the imam that question, inshallah. Now, most ulama, they said plastic surgery is allowed if there's a medical need. Dar ifta. I translated this research paper on this issue. Somebody is born with certain issues. Somebody, maybe they're in it. May ask Allah bil-afiyya. They have some kind of accident. Some kind of wreck. Something has happened to them. How they just... Because there's a difference between takmil al-asl with taghir al-asl. 
in fatwa. There's a difference between completing what was already there and changing what was already there. But for me to go get 1,000 facelifts for no reason, that's تغيير الأصل. فليغيرن خلق الله. But God forbid if something happens to someone and for whatever reason they need to have some work done to achieve the look that they had before, the accident or whatever, it's allowed. It's allowed. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ إِلَىٰ نِيَاتِكُمْ That's why Imam al nawi put in this chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your niyat. وَأَعْمَارِكُمْ And your actions. إِنَّ مَعَلَىٰ مَعَلُوا بِنِيَاتِ Actions are by the intentions. The next hadith from Abi Musa, Abdullah ibn Qais al-Ash'ari. As we said before, this is the great, great, great grandfather of Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. Rahimahumullah. They're originally from Yemen. There's a lot of Yemenis around here, mashallah. Well, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he made a hijrah twice. Once on accident and one on purpose. On accident, he was in a shipwreck. And he landed in Habasha. And then he went from Habasha to Medina. And he sacrificed a lot for Islam, man. And when the Prophet wasallam saw him, he made dua for him. He said, may Allah bless you and your life and your efforts and your wealth. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. قال سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الرجل يقاتل شجاعة ويقاتل حمية ويقاتل رياء. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked about a person who fights to show their bravery or fights to achieve valor or fights to show off. And the person said, أي ذلك في سبيل الله يا رسول الله. O Messenger of Allah, which one of those fought in the cause of Allah? And as we said earlier, one of the lessons we take from the first chapter is that the Prophet ﷺ acts as a teacher in almost every moment you can imagine. Whether his wife say to Aisha in their house, the, the second hadith, with Jabir ibn Abdullahi and Anas ibn Malik on the battlefield, he's teaching people. The hadith of Abi Ishaq. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas at his deathbed, the Prophet teaches him. And now here. So we see something like the role of the da'iya in the, in, in the uh, adjudication between Ma'an and his father. The Prophet is teaching. So constantly the Prophet is teaching as though we're seeing this famous belief we have about the Prophet's Adam will kit man. That the prophets didn't hide anything. Anything that needed to be taught, they taught it. Now people teach us, what do we say? Haram police. It's not, it's not what they're teaching, maybe the way they're teaching is the problem, right? That's a different story. We'll talk about it in future chapters. But we shouldn't make fun of the haram. Because the haram is sacred. The haram is from khitab Allah. It's from what Allah has communicated to us. But the Prophet in these moments, when there is a good opportunity, he teaches people. He doesn't hide anything from them. And that's why it's very important in the, in the celebrity culture of imams in America to be with the people. If you're on stage, you give big uh, conferences, you're, that's good. But that's not the work. Well, I, I, my wife, you know, we just had a baby. I live in Silver Spring. Like the drive here ain't easy. But alhamdulillah, I love to be with a Muslim. Because that's how we were, we were raised in the 90s. We learned in the masjids. We were taught by the shuk in the masjids. We were with the people in the masjid. So you have to serve the people. Khadimhum. As the Prophet sallallahu said, Sayyidun Nas. Khadimuhum, Sheikh Ahmad Tahare, and MashaAllah. When he used to teach us in Egypt, tea is a very important thing. And um, we would be studying the Khalil, and people would come with tea. 
and I ask Sheikh Yusuf Rios from Puerto Rico, but from, from Philly, man, who, who's, who brought the tea? He said, Sheikh Ahmed Tahari. He paid them to serve us. Like, be with the people. Right? If you, if you got a big Instagram following and you're not in the masjid, then you're not really like, who do you serve? You have to have experiences with people. They teach you. Sayyidina Rasul says some su'ila. And we said here something also very important. That the Sahaba, we learned the adab of the Salaf from the narrations of the Hadith. How they talk, how they ask questions, how they engage. Su'ila. Somebody asked the Messenger of Allah. Sometimes people ask about very sensitive subjects. So they will say, Su'ilat. Some woman asked him. Su'ila. Some man ask him. At that time, Medina was very small. If you go to Medina, you know, the white kind of tile on the outside, that was the whole city. Before you get to the hotels, the moving pick and all that, that was the whole city. So they all knew each other. It wasn't possible they didn't know who the person was. Why would they not mention their name? Out of adab. Maybe the person didn't want to be known. Maybe the person asked a sensitive question. Maybe the person asked what many people would be considered an uninformed question. So they, they have respect. They're not trying to destroy each other, man. Even in their narrations. Subhanallah. So he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked, if somebody fights for bravery or fights for, you know, to be like known, to achieve sort of like, you know, to protect himself and others but without the intention, or somebody fights to show off, the person said to him, Ayyudharika fi sibilla. And here we learn something in the hadith in the later period in Medina. We begin to see a change in the type of questions they ask. Why? Because they're educated. They, they begin to ask questions about the ilal in usul. They start to ask, what's the reason for it? And the Prophet doesn't get angry. In fact, he gets happy because it's an indication that they've what? But they've, they've learned. They're growing. Ayyudharika fi sabirillah. Which one of them is fighting in the cause of Allah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qatala li takuna karimatullahi l'uya. Whoever fights so that, that Allah's word is high, meaning sincerely for Allah. That's why Nawiya uh, puts it here. Fahuwa fi sabirillah. Then that person is exclusively, that's why he says, Fahuwa. Then say, Fafi sabirillah. Fahuwa faqat yani. That's the only one that fights sincerely. We could take this at a micro level and apply it to da'wah. Man da'a liyakun shuja'an. Man da'a liyakun mashhuran. Man da'an liyaktasib al-atba'a. Whoever makes da'wah to be known. Who makes da'wah for likes. Who makes da'wah to grow their followers. Ayyu dharika fi sabirillah. Which one of them are in the cause of Allah? Who's the real influencer? Man da'a li takuna karimatullahi hi al-ulya fahuwa da'a fi sabirillah. Aw fahuwa fi sabirillah. So whoever makes da'wa for Allah, then that person is the one who calls to Allah. If you post something on Instagram about Islam and you're busy checking the likes, that's not for Allah, that's for you. Well, like one time, I was with one brother at Kebab Palace, man. Qasru Kebab. And he kept checking his phone. Man. I thought the brother was under, in trouble or something, like, you know. And I said, are you okay? Your wife mad at you, bro? Everything all right at the house? He's like, nah, man. I put up this post about sincerity. I just want to see how many people like it. I said, do you not see the contradiction in all this? You put up a post about sincerity, but you want to see if people like what you posted. If it was for Allah, leave it for Allah. وَعَنْهُ عَنْ أَبِي بَكْرَ نُفَاعِ ابْنُ الْحَارِثِ الثَّقَفِ بَنُ ثَقِيفِ أَبِي بَكْرَ, as we said earlier, was from Ta'if. He was a slave. 
he escaped and came to the Prophet sallallahu and the people of Ta'if demanded he be sent back. And the Prophet sallallahu said, how can I send back the one Allah has emancipated? And how can I send back the one who was emancipated by the Messenger of Allah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As we mentioned also in the fitna between Sayyidina Ali, Karram Allah Wajah, and Muawiyah, radiallahu anhu, he didn't get involved. Radiallahu anhu, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala, idha iltaqa al-musliman. Iltaqa is not a noun, it's a verb. So don't think that alif and lam in the ta is huruf shamsiyah. Alif and Lam is the sign of a noun. But if it doesn't have a shadda after it, it's not mu'arraf bi alif lam. So he said, if two Muslimen bi sayfihima fal qatil wal maqtulu fi nar. If two Muslims meet with their swords out, فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُولُ فِي النَّارِ Then the killer and the killer are in hellfire. قُلْتُ He said, I said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ هَذَا الْقَاتِلُ فَمَا بَلَ مَقْتُولُ that's, that's the killer, but the one that was killed? How come he's in hellfire? The Prophet he doesn't get angry. So don't think earlier when I was, you know, talking about our behavioral management issues in this classroom, that I mind if you ask questions or you disagree with me. I don't mind that. Because I know I'm wrong. Anybody who thinks they're right all the time, one of our students one time with our teacher, Sheikh, was talking about Tawbah. We may talk about it today if we have time. And the, one of our brothers, he said, Sheikh, wallahi, I don't feel I need to make Tawbah. And Sheikh said, you should make Tawbah. He said, he said, for being dumb. Only a dumb person would think he doesn't need to make Tawbah. So alhamdulillah, we don't have that kind of, we don't need to create that kind of climate. None of us are, are all of us have something to share, something to give. Alhamdulillah. So he said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, هذا القاتل, okay, yeah, the one who killed, I get it. But what did the killer do? The Prophet he didn't get angry at him. We have to be very careful of climate in American Muslim community where asking questions is a sign of a lack of respect. No, no asking a question is a sign of ultimate respect. People trust you enough to ask you a question. Why are you getting angry about it? Don't be insecure with yourself. And the Prophet said, Sahaikum. Innahu kana harisan ala qatli sahibi. The Prophet said, He intended to kill him. And we take an important axiom from this Al Murbi Maqasidiha. From the five major axioms of Islam are that actions are by the intention in Islamic law, agreed upon by Ahl Sunnah. Maybe somebody asks, How come they're in hellfire? Because they didn't have a chance to make, the one who died, he didn't have a chance to make tawbah. And the one who killed, it's understood from the hadith, matab. He never repented to Allah. As we'll talk about later, inshaAllah ta'ala. Uh, the next hadith from Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu. We talked about Abu Huraira a lot. Qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatu rajuli fi jama'atin. تزيد على صلاته في سوقه وبيتي. The Prophet said that a man who prays in the masjid, that prayer will be more rewarding for him than in his, his place of work or his residence be bid'an wa shirina daraja. 27 times more reward. وَذَارِكَ And that is Somebody makes wudu and they make wudu right. They observe the fara'id of wudu mentioned in Surah Ma'idah, verse number 6. And they observe the sunnah of wudu and the fada'il of wudu. ثُمَّ أَتَى masjid. The hadith continues. And then after they make wudu, they go to the masjid. Here we understand from this hadith, subtle point, it's good to make wudu in your house. Then you go to the masjid. Thumma, yani, ata al masjid. La yuridu illa salah. The Prophet said, and this is why he said, now we put it here. The only thing he wants is salah. Meaning his intention 
is for salah. Mashallah, how many brothers just came to the masjid, subhanAllah, and sisters? You're like, you got this hadith, you know? لا يريد الصلاة ولا ينهزه إلا الصلاة فهناك إلا الصلاة وثاني إلا الصلاة إن هذا الناقص إلا الصلاة مفعول به إلا الصلاة فاعل لا يريد إلا الصلاة ولا ينهزه إلا الصلاة What did Imam Anawi put this here? The only thing he wants is prayer and the only thing that pushed him out yan huzu yan yukhriju The only thing that pushed him to go out is salah He wasn't going to the masjid to argue with someone <clears throat> or, you know get some money whatever You never be surprised what people do Sometimes people's shoes get stolen in the masjid Brother came to find some new Air Jordans or something man He didn't come for salah The only thing he wants is salah. The only thing that encouraged him to go out is salah. لَمْ يَخْطُوا خُطْوَةً إِلَّا رُوفِعَ لَهُ بِهَا دَرَجَةً He said that he will not take one step except he will be raised. His status will be raised, alhamdulillah. أَيْ رَفَعُهُ اللَّهُ Allah will raise him in the hereafter. وَحُطَّ عَنْهُ بِهَا خَطِيئَةٌ حَتَّى يَدْخُلَ الْمَسْجِدِ And every other step is a sin forgiven. Boom, 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 boom. That's why when people said unmask, I understand that sentiment. But if I go to the third space, is this going to happen? With respect. Is that going to happen with any place except the masjid? So our attachment to the masjid is not only a material or physical attachment. Our attachment to the masjid is because there are certain blessings associated with the place that are unique. And that's why the people of the masjid have to be blessed people. Because they are representing that blessing. حَتَّى يَدْخُلَ الْمَسْجِدِ Till he enters the masjid. فَإِذَا دَخَلَ الْمَسْجِدِ كَانَ فِي صَلَاتِ مَا كَانَتِ الصَّلَاةُ تَحْبِسُهُ and if that person enters the masjid, when they enter the masjid, it is though they are in salah. That's very important. When we walk in, inside a masjid, if I have that intention, then I'm in salah. That means I'm not going to get involved in anything. Because salah has ihram. Salah has certain etiquette. So when I walk into the masjid, if I take this narration that he's in salah because of his intention, then I'm going to carry myself accordingly. مَا كَانَتَ الصَّلَاةُ تَحْبِسُهُ And the Prophet ﷺ said, as long as the salah, you know, holds him and keeps him. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدِكُمْ مَا دَامَ فِي مَجْلِسِهِ الَّذِي يَصَلَّ فِي That's why if you come here from Maghrib, you should sit and wait. Because this hadith, because the Prophet said the, that the angels will pray for any of you who sit in the place that they prayed in. And what will those angels say? Ya Allah. Allah marhamhu. The angels will say for you, Allah have mercy on that person. Allah maghfir lahu. Oh Allah, forgive him. Allah matub. Ali, oh Allah, turn to him. Why Allah matub Ali? Allah turn to him. Because actually, as we'll talk about if we have time tonight, Toba is the sign that Allah has already turned to us. Allah says that Allah turned to them, if you translate it, so they would turn to Allah. That's why Imam Ibn Qayyim says something so nice. He said that the, the Toba is a sign of Hidayah. Like sometimes we want to repent, we feel I'm such a bad person, I'm so horrible. I'm so evil because I feel I want to repent. No, no, the opposite. ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا Allah turned to them. He turned to them with hidayah and rahmah and anwar وَالشَّوَارِقُ الْقُلُوبِ Allah opened their heart, dilated their mind, made them aware of their own evil, and they said, the only thing I can do is turn to Allah. 
So that's why I said, Allahumma tub alayh. Liyatub ilayk. Allah turn to that person so they will turn back to you. As long as that person doesn't bother anybody. As long as they don't harm or bother people. That's, that's why we have to be very careful in the masjid. We, we can do amr bin ma'roof or nahi an al munkar anywhere. We are commanded to do it anywhere. But don't forget, waqfu janahak lil mu'minin. Man, a lot of people come to the masjid, they don't know what maybe you know. They, they might not have that awareness. One time, subhanAllah, I was in Egypt. Egyptians don't get mad at me for the story. And I was with this, this guy in a, in a taxi. I was young, so I was hot-blooded, man. You know, you're young, got that kind of glaze to you. At least I did. I'll speak about myself. That Oklahoma glaze, man. And uh, Buffett was from East Coast. So I was in a taxi, and I had a book by Imam Suyuti. Abdurrahman al-Suyuti, Imam Suyuti died 9-11 after Hijri. Rahimahullah. So I was reading it, and this dude was looking at me, because he's like, this big white dude reading Arabic, you know. And he's like, you going to the embassy? I was like, nah, I don't work at the embassy. <laughs> he thought I worked at the embassy. You know, he racially profiled me. I said, no, I'm going to the Azhar, man. He's like, well, why? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm a student over there, man. I don't work at the embassy. He offended me. And then um, he said, what are you reading? I said, I'm reading this book by Imam Siyuti. He's like, fain da khat yaktub fi? Where does he get the khutbah? So then I got angry. I said, man, he died like 9-11 after Hijri, man. Don't you know anything? Da -da -da -da. You listen to Amr Diya, blah, blah. I started going off on him, right? I started giving him the blues. And he said to me, he said, you know what? I didn't have the time to study like you. It's a good statement, man. He said, you, you, you're being really hard on me, but look, I'm, I'm, I drive a taxi, bro. Then I, I took a lesson from that, man. You know, I have a book, Mudhakilati Ma'a Sawa'iq, My Time with Taxis. A lot, I learned a lot from them brothers, man. Right? They have a lot to teach you because they're, they're like the barbers of Egypt, the barbers in America. You know, the barbers can tell you everything. And he said to me, like, have mercy on me. I don't know. How am I supposed to know that, man? You know, I, so people coming here, you may see people make mistakes. They don't know what you know, man. We don't punish people till we send a prophet. So the default is kindness. The default with the Muslims when we're making da'wah is kindness. The default with, with people that are openly doing something wrong is firmness. That are not believers. But with the believers in the masjid, وَخْفُدْ جَنَاحَكْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Even in our hearts, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْرِكَ Allah said to Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if even your heart is harsh to them, they will leave you. If that's his heart, what about his tongue and his actions? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he said, فَإِذَا دَخَلَ الْمَسْجِدْ كَانَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ مَا كَانَتَ الصَّلَاةُ هِيَ تَحْبِسُهُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدِكُمْ مَا دَامَ فِي مَجْلِسِهِ الَّذِي صَلَّ فِيهِ يَقُولُونَ اللَّهُ مَرْحَمْهُ اللَّهُ مَغْفِرْ لَهُ اللَّهُ مَتُبْ عَلَيْهِ مَا لَمْ يُؤْذِ فِيهِ مَا لَمْ يُحْدِثُ فِيهِ As long as he doesn't bother anybody or loses his wudu. This hadith is متفقون عليه. Why did and now we put it here? لا يريد إلا الصلاة That's why this hadith is here. That the only thing he wanted is salah. Inshallah, we're going to stop here and we'll read the last hadith. And then after salah, we'll come back and read the last hadith from the chapter. Imam al Nawi, as we mentioned in our introduction, he relied largely for his book on a book called At Targhib wa Targhib of Imam al-Mundari. And as we said earlier, we're going to uncover where sometimes Imam al nawi would be actually hand copying from the writings of Imam al-Mundari. And that sometimes caused some issues when he'd say, وَلَفْضُ Bukhari," Because al-Mundari would make the mistake and al nawi قَلَّدَهُ فِي هذا. But actually the lafz would be to who? To Bazar. Or at tirmidhi Or Abi Dawood. As we'll talk about in the future, inshallah. Of course, 
doesn't take anything away from those people. Everybody makes mistakes. Anybody looking for a perfect person, they should read the seerah. Everyone else is going to make mistakes. But this part also, when Imam al nawi rahimahullah, al-alama, al-mujaddid, al-muhaddith, al-faqih, when he would mention definitions of word, this is of words, this is coming verbatim from Targhib al If you go and look in that book, you're going to find the same exact phrase. أَيُّخْرِجُهُ وَيُنْهِدُهُ Rahimahullah. And also that shows you the humility of Imam al He didn't have to bring something new. The next hadith, one Abil Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalibi radiallahu anhuma. This is the nephew of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also from Ahli Bayt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Abbas. His nickname is Habru al Ummah, the great scholar of the Ummah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made dua for, for him, Allahumma alimhu al kitaba. وَفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Another narration, عَلِّمُهُ التَّأْوِيلَ وَفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Oh Allah, allow him the ability to interpret the Qur'an correctly and give him an understanding of religion. There is, you know, in the market, it's called Tafsir Ibn Abbas. Man, he didn't write that book, man. Somebody got paid. He didn't write that book. Just like we said last week, Ibn Sirin's Book of Dreams. Ibn Sirin didn't write that. Ibn Sirin was a muhaddith. His daughter, Aisha, is one of the great scholars of hadith. So somebody, somebody went viral before we knew what viral was. They made a lot of money from Tafsir ibn Abbas and the Book of Dreams of Ibn Sirin. Rahimahullah. An Abil Abbas, Abdillah ibn Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalibi radiyallahu anhuma. عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يروي عن ربه. سيدنا عبد الله بن عباس narrates from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم who narrates from Allah. So this is called what? Hadith Qudsi. Maybe somebody asked, what's the difference between Hadith Qudsi and the Quran? The first, the wording and the meaning in the Quran is the same. We have to be very careful now as we talked about, inshallah, as we, when we read this, we're going to read with a qira'ah of Ibn Amir. Dimashqi. Because Imam al he didn't read with hafs. This is a mistake in printing that people make, unfortunately. Everything now is printed in hafs. Qurtubi, he read with hafs. Qursi is from Andalus and from Egypt. Egypt up until the time of the Ottomans, who knows what qira'a was the most popular qira'a in Egypt before the Ottoman Empire. Warsh. Anafi. So, Sayyidina Imam al in the introduction to this book, it should be written in the Qira'a of Ibn Amr, al Dimashqi, which in his time was the most popular Qira'a on the face of the earth. Why? Because of the Amawi dynasty was from where? The head of the Amawi dynasty was where? In Damascus. So that, that impact, even though they were long gone, by the time Sayyidina Imam al nawi comes on the scene, that impact is still there. Well, we have to be very careful. Some of the rhetoric now that the Imams of Qur'an made ijtihad. La yashir. People who say that are people that haven't studied the Qira'at with the Mashaykh. Sayyidina Shatibi says in Hirz al-Imani, وَمَا لِلْقِيَاسِ فِي الْقِرَآتِ مَدْخَلُوا فَدُونَكَ فِي مَنْ رِضَى مُتَكَفِّلًا Sayyidina Shatibi says there's no Qiyas in the Qur'an. Everything is narrated back to Sayyid al-Akwan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Sayyidina Ibn Abbas the Qira'ah of Imam Ibn Kathir, not the Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Rahimahullah, student of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimahullah. Ibn Kathir, Mekki, has two major reciters, Qumbul and Bazzi. There, both of those Turuq go back to who? Abdullah Ibn Abbas. That's why Sadat al Shafi'iyah, they love Qira'ah of Ibn Kathir because Imam Shafi is what? Muttalabi. And he's originally from. Palestine, but he was raised where? In Mecca. So he used to read with what? Quran, not Quran. Even Kathir, Quran, Ghayru Mahmus. So Abdullah ibn Abbas is in the Sanad, the point I'm making of Sayyidina Imam ibn Kathir between him and ibn Abbas is one person in Quran. 
And this is Habru Ummah. And the one that the Prophet said, Alimuhu Ta'wi. So don't get caught up. As, that's why the Shatibi says, Fadunaka Fima Rida Mutakafila. Like, don't busy yourself. Just be with the Ummah of the Prophet about the Quran. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, he said, from the Prophet, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Quran, the meaning and the wording is from Allah. Hadith al Qudsi, the meaning is from Allah, the wording is from Sayyidina Rasulullah. The second difference is you, you don't have to have wudu to read Hadith al Qudsi. The third difference, you can't pray. Nobody can say, Allahu Akbar. Inna Allah katabah sayyati wal hasanati wal sayyat. Thumma bayyina dharika. That's only for Quran. So that's why we call al hadith in general in usul al-deen is called ghayru matlu. It's not recited. There's no tilawa. Fan an ibn Abbas in radiyallahu anhuma al rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama fi ma yarwi al rabbihi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Tabarak. It's hard to translate. It means blessed. But it means bless. But also for us there's a meaning. What do you call a camel that can go across the desert with nothing? Buruk. That's why when people get married, what do you say? Don't say mabruk. Actually the word mabruk means a camel that's sitting down. You should say what? I know Egyptians, maybe some of them don't like to say it. What do you say? Mubarak. So the correct thing is Mubarak, not Mabruk. Unless you want to give them some camels. It's okay. Alf Mabruk. Jazakallah khair. Why? Sayyidina Imam al-Razi says because the word Baraka actually comes from this word, this camel, that doesn't need a lot. So with our relationship with Allah, if we say Tabaraka, I don't need a lot from Allah. Yakfini Rabbi. So just like the camel is Mubarak, that doesn't need a lot to cross the desert, we recognize Allah who wa tabarak because we don't need a lot to cross this dunya if we have Allah. So you lose something in, in English, the pixels ain't the same, bro. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Inna Allah kataba al hasanati wa sayyati. Thumma bayyana dharik. Kataba means that this is qada. Allah decreed the good and the evil. Every good and evil. Imam Sanusi says, and in his famous sughra, as sughra in Aqidah, good and evil is from Allah. Sometimes Muslims they get caught up that Joe Osteen stuff, boy. Good is from God and evil is from, some, from who? I, I don't know. That's shirk, bro. Qul kullu min indi Allah. In our relationship with Al-Qada, to keep it simple, we say, وَكُلُّ أَمْرٍ بِالْقَضَاءِ وَالْقَدَرِ وَكُلُّ مَقْدُورٍ فَمَا عَنْهُ مَفَرْ That's what Sayyidina Imam Shaykh Al-Dardir in Al-Kharida, his poem in Aqeedah. He says, وَكُلُّ أَمْرٍ بِالْقَضَاءِ وَالْقَدَرِ Everything that happens is decreed by Allah and then measured by Allah. وَكُلُّ مَقْدُورٍ And whatever has been measured for you, فَمَا عَنْهُ مَفَرْ you can't escape it. So kataba, everything good and bad that's going to happen is maktub. Decreed by Allah. Maybe somebody says, as we finish, but if Allah knows everything, why should I try? Because He knows everything. What do you mean? If someone knows everything, and I believe they know everything, and they tell me to do something. If I really believe they know everything, am I going to argue with them? Or am I going to listen to them? I'm going to listen to them. So remember this principle. We cannot affirm perfect wisdom while questioning the commands of Allah. If I believe Allah's knowledge is perfect and He knows everything that happens, whether good or bad, in the past and the present in the future, Whatever Allah has commanded me, I will do it. That's why he says, وَكُلَّهُ مُسَلِّمَا كَيْ تَسْلَمَا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ نَاكِسِينَ الْعُلَمَا Sheikh Dardir in Al-Kharidah, Al-Bahiyyah, 
He says about Al-Qada Al-Qadr wa kullahu musalliman. Submit to it. Kay taslama. So you be safe. Wa tabi' sabila nakisin al-ulama. Follow the ulama. Fa inna Allah katab al-hasanati wa sayyati thumma bayi thumma fassala dharik. Thumma bayina dharik. He made all this very clear. Inshallah, we're going to stop here. We'll finish these last two hadith after Salatul Isha every Tuesday. Next week, inshallah, we're going to give the Asanad in Bukhari and Muslim. The Asanad in Bukhari is the sanad, shortest Sanad on the face of the earth, alhamdulillah, from Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Kittani. To those people who sit in the front, right here. Right? And to sisters who come, alhamdulillah, the regular people who come. Inshallah, an Shaykhina Abdul Rahman al-Kittani. Inshallah, we'll start after Isha. Barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Aman al-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Jala'i qulubina wa nwari uyunina. Wa farhi dunyana. Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi fi al-awwani wa fi al-akhirin wa fi al-mali al-a'la. Ya rabbil alameen. Inshallah, we continue. From Yad al-Salihin of Imam al nawi every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, inshallah. Soon we're going to have bouncers. Inshallah ta'ala. We're going to... Wa'anhu qal from Sayyidina Imam al nawi rahimahullah. The hadith of Ibn Abbas. Abdillah ibn Abbas, Abdi al-Muttalabi radiyallahu anhuma. عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يرويه عن ربه تبارك وتعالى. This hadith is like hadith قدسي. We said you don't have to have wudu, you don't even have to have tahara, although it's better to have tahara, but you don't have to have it, and you can't make salat with it. إن الله تعالى كتب الحسنات والسيئات ثم بين ذلك الحسنات والسيئات is called جمع ها مذكري أم وأنثي السالم the female plural مسلمات سيئات مؤمنات حسنات قانتات تائبات إمام ابن مالك in his Alfiyah, he says, وَمَا بِتَا وَأَرِفِ الْقَدْ جُمِعَ يُكْسَرُ فِي الْجَمْعِ وَفِي نَصْبِي كَمَا Imam Ibn Malik in the Alfiyah, it's a famous poem we had to memorize. Wish we had people in America we could teach the Alfiyah to. People still with Ajrumiyah. Ajrumiyah, I taught it to my daughter when she was four. The challenge sometimes in America is we make things bigger than they are. So we don't accomplish more. So he said, the sign of this type of noun is alif lam, alif and ta, afwan. وَمَا بِتَا وَأَلِفٍ قَدْ جُمِعَ يُكْسَرُ فِي النَّصْبِ وَفِي جَرِّ كَمَا Which means all of the sayyat and all of the hasanat, Allah decreed it before creation. Salat al-Asha'ira, Ahlu Sunnah, we say al-Azli, qabla al-Khalq. And we said, this is the belief in qada and qadr. وَكُلُّ أَمْرَ بِي قَضَاءٍ وَالْقَدْرِ وَكُلُّ مَقْدُورٍ فَمَا عَنْهُ نَفَرْ أَوْ مَفَرْ That's what Shaykh Ad-Dardir in Al-Kharida said everything that happens is qada and qadr. Nobody can escape it. وَكُلُّهُ مُسَلِّمَا كَيْ تَسْلَمَا وَاتَّبَعْ سَبِيلَ الْنَاكِسِينَ الْعُلَمَا This is in Al-Kharida Al-Bahiyya. So in Allah Kataba Al Hasanati was Sayati Thumma Bayna Dharika Lil Malaika. Then he made this clear to all of the Malaika that have all of these responsibilities until the end of time. And here's why Imam An Nawi put this hadith in this chapter. Faman Hamma bi Hasanatin Falam Yamalha Katabaha Allahu Tabaraka wa Taala in Dahu Hasanatan Kamila. وَمَنْ هَمَّ means وَمَنْ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَهَذَا عَمْ يُرَادُ بِهِ الْخَاصِ Here, man doesn't mean anybody. It means just anyone who says لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله. That's why 
Some ulama, they put this hadith under the section, the special qualities only for the ummah. Those blessed qualities that are only for the ummah of the Prophet So whoever intends to do good and doesn't do it, Allah decreed for that person a complete good. وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِهَا وَعَمِلَ بِهَا And whoever hum, we have five levels of thought in Islam or consciousness. The first is al-khawatir, like so, these ideas that come and go. After al-khawatir is al-mayl, I start to lean toward it. Then al-azm or al-irada, then I start to really want to do it. Then al-azma, then I, I put it into play. And then finally, Al-Amal. Imam Ibn Qayyim, he has a great statement about like bad thoughts, khawatir. He says, Iyakum al khatra. Be careful of bad ideas. Because if you're not, they'll lead you to trouble. And he mentions it really nicely. He says, because if you don't, Oppose those like sudden bad ideas, was was. Sarat shahwa. It became a desire. Fadarikha bididihi. Oh, faqatta'ha. He said at that time when it becomes a desire, you should amputate it. Don't let it grow. Fa'ilam taf'al, sarat azima. Because if you don't do that, then it becomes something that you want it. You really begin to want it. Fa'haribha. He said, so declare war on that. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ صَارَتْ فِعْلًا Because if you don't, it becomes an action. فَيُسْعُبُ عَلَيْكَ الْتِقَالُ عَنْهَا And it will be impossible for you to stop then. It becomes a habit. That's why Abu Hamid, Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazari, he said the sin starts with the idea. فَهِيرَ The Prophet said, وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِهَا أي وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِهَا الْحَسَنَا فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا and doesn't act on it or does uh, فَعَمِلَ بِهَا and acts on it uh, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَ عِنْدَهُ أو كتب الله عشر حسنات إلى سبع مئة ضعف إلى أضعاف كثيرة Whoever intends it and does it will be rewarded from 10 to 700 or infinite times more. And this is a special blessing for the believers. Because sometimes shaitan will come to us and say, you know, you live, you, you didn't, maybe you made toba when you were older. It's like, how am I going to make up for all those years that I wasted? Subhanallah, by doing one good deed with an intention, 10 to 700 times more. And if I intend it and I don't do it, Sincerely, I get a complete hasana. The wording of the Prophet is important. He didn't say hasanatan wahida. He says hasanatan kamila. Uh, like, like it was done perfectly, subhanallah. That's why Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, when his son came to him and he said, advise me, he said, Ya abni, oh my son, always just have a good intention. Because you'll get rewarded for it. Then he continues, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَإِنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَبَهَ اللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا Ya Salam. Whoever intends to do bad and doesn't do it. Because sometimes we, we say, man, I have all these bad thoughts, man. All these bad ideas. All these bad thoughts. But as long as we don't translate those bad thoughts into actions, you win. And shaitan will try to tell you, if you're so good, why do you think about bad stuff? Because you're a human being, man. We're surrounded by bad stuff. It's very difficult now. And, and the way of the city in particular, in an era of communism and capitalism, is that it amplifies what appeals to the nafs. Islam as a society and Islam as a science, as a religious science, as we'll talk about in the future, its goal is yaqeen. 
its goal is certainty be wujudillah in Allah's existence. The West, largely its goal is the accumulation of material gain. So therefore, it, it's in its best interest to amplify what appeals to the nafs. And Muslims are not free of that. Look at TikTok in China. Anyone know about the rules of TikTok in China? If you're under 14, you got 40 minutes a day. Kicks you off. You're only allowed to use TikTok from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And they have a different algorithm there. They're 14 year olds. You know what they see? Scientists, mathematicians, scholars, nuclear physicists. What our kids see? Cats with balloons coming out their backside, filled with mouth mints or some stuff, man. So there was a study done recently on America's youth, Generation Z. What is that you aspire to be? You know what they said? Influencers. They asked Generation Z in China, said scholars. And don't think just because we're adults. I mean, when you walk into the octagon on social media, the algorithm that's facing you, that's impossible to defeat. It's impossible to defeat that thing. So that's going to create certain feelings, man. It's meant to do that. People told me, every time I go to YouTube, I see what I don't agree with. Exactly, because they want to stir your emotions. If they show you what you agree with, some ACMR or something, you, 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 you're not going to get involved. You're not going to get invested. So people don't understand the game is that actually it shows you things that they know you don't agree with to trigger you. To b force you, to compel you. So we're in a world where sayyat are everywhere, man. It's hard. It's difficult. It's tough. And the phone, Abu al-Ma'asi. The phone, his name should be Abu al-Ma'asi. That's around us all the time. So man hamma bi sayyatin falam ya'malha katabaha Allahu indahu hasanatan kamila. Subhanallah. Whoever intended to do evil and doesn't do it will get a complete good deed. So the more difficult bad thoughts you have, the more you fight those, the more you're cashing in. We talk about, you know, income that we can accrue without work. That's hasanat you can accrue without work. In fact, every day you should say, oh Allah, every haram that's happened in the face of the earth today, I intend the opposite. Cash in. Then he continues, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Hamma be say ye a teen, what in Hamma be her for Amila, Katabaha law who say ye a ten wahida, and say say ye a ten Kamila, Subhanallah. Whoever intends to do bad and does bad, Allah has recorded for that person one bad deed, not a complete bad deed. It may not be all of the punishment associated with it. This is a very important hadith for chaplains. And people serving Muslims who struggle. And a way to show them there's hope. This hadith, some of our mashaykh al hadith al raja The hadith of hope. Because again, maybe I'm very old. Maybe I missed Ramadans. Maybe I missed my zakah. I need to make up for that. And I try my best. But I know, mashallah, 10 to 700 times, alhamdulillah. Versus one bad deed. The last hadith, inshallah, we're going to finish is from Abi Abdurrahman ibn Amr ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhumah. Just as we said earlier, Abu Hurayrata is mamna' man asarf, Umara is mamna' man asarf. You don't say Umarun, Umarin, la Umara for those students here that are serious students. We have students that like to argue, students that come in as shuk, and then people who want to learn, man. People want to learn. And it doesn't mean we don't ask questions, but I'm going to challenge you a little bit. We can't just cheerlead the community, man. So there's something called mamnu' minat sarf, a minat tanween. Means that a word doesn't accept tanween, an in un, zabar bash in Urdu. Oh, Urdu ati, alhamdulillah. We can go that way too. 
I gave you one example earlier, Hurayrata. Why? Because Huraira is a name, Arif Tatneeth. Here, Umara, because the form was called Adal. Al Alamiya wal Adal. Not An Umari, Aw Umaran, Aw Umarun, Umarab, Ni Al Khattabi. Radiallahu anhu from his son Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, mashallah, he became Muslim very young. Some say 10 years before Hijrah, some say three years before Hijrah. He, he was born. Uh, and then he went to the battles on multiple occasions. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he turned him away. He was very young. Showed, shows you like his dedication. And he spent a lot of time with his father. His father, Abdullah, uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, understood that parenting is about bringing children into our being. Check ourselves. If you spend t- 10 hours a day in the restroom at home, it's probably because you don't want your family in your being. That's not a healthy place to be. I'd rather be in the restroom than with my family. That's not, that doesn't make sense. But being a good father, and I'll let the mothers talk to the mothers, but being a good father is about being present, giving the children the gift of your presence. That's why it's called present, because you give them a gift. And it's not about how much time, it's about the quality of time we spend with them. The best thing we can do as fathers is put our phone down when we're with our children. Abdullah ibn Umar, he used to go everywhere with his father. People used to get angry. Why do you bring this young boy with you? Then they can you rabbi. He raised him. He understood this is a manna. This is a responsibility. The best hood is fatherhood. And he would encourage him, like the hadith of the, uh, uh, of the date tree. He said, oh, I knew but I was scared to say it was the day tree. He said, if you said it, it would have been the most beloved thing to me. Many of our ulama are, are the fruits of their parents. Aisha bin Shati from Egypt. She died like a few years ago. The most complete text we have of the muqaddimah of Ibn Salah in hadith is from her. Why? Because when she was young, her father was a great scholar in the Azhar. He used to take her to all the classes that he taught and even the, the munaqashat, the discussions with the ulama. And she was there playing as a, as a girl, little girl playing. And they used to say, why do you, why you always bring this girl here? But the sheikh, Allah gave him firasa. And actually she struggled with deen a little bit in her life. She struggled. And she started to pull away from the deen until she, mashallah, there was one great professor in Dara Ulum in, in Cairo. And, she'd be, and her problem was she was, too, she was too smart for everybody, man. She was a genius. She memorized all these books that she heard her father and these people talk about when she was like six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Musahaba tajibu baraka. That's why they're called sahaba. The prophet did, his companions are not called mustami'een, listeners. Although their, their listening abilities are praised. What are they called? Suhba. Suhba in Arabic actually means to rub together dirt like this. In the early 2000s in my dirties. Right, that's very similar to what Sahabi means. We're so close to each other, our dirt rubs off on each other. That's actually the meaning of Suhub. So Aisha bin Shati, one day she was at an academic gathering and people were arguing about the muqaddimah of Abi Amr ibn Salah, the, the, the makhtuta, the handwritten copy. And she said, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. They said, how do you know? Then she started quoting a text, Brrr, just word for word. He said, who are you? She said, I'm Aisha bin Shata. My shit. Oh, you're fu- yeah, yeah, that's your dad. Your dad was a great scholar, but how- she, I memorized all this. So they found that she was the most uh, complete, uh, she found that she was the most complete, wow, even people on Instagram tell you the sounds off, you know you're in trouble, man. She had the most complete, Text by memory. Why? Because her father invested in her. Man. It's very important to spend time with our children if we can. We're working. We got bills. Inflation's killing. We all shopping at all these now. I understand. Right? Costco is now cost up. But it's not about how much time we spend with them, but with our, our spouses and our children, the quality of time we give them. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ عَشِرْ from عَشَرَةِ 
We say in Egyptian, Sirat, huh? Sirat, Sirat Ashara. If you speak Ami Egyptian, you know what it means. A perfect tin. We say it in English. That's a tin. That brother, that was a tin that dunked the Celtics did tonight on Embiid. That was a tin. Same thing in the Quran. Wa'ashiruhunna, Mu'ashara. Why the Arabs call it Mu'ashara? Because when you live together with each other, you should be a tin. Subhanallah. Look at the language, man. Fadi Mu'ashara. Here, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr al-Khattab, he spent a lot of time with his father. There's only one regret that Umar, uh, Abdullah ibn Amr al-Khattab had in his whole life. Who knows what that regret is? That he didn't fight with Ali. Radiallahu anhu. Because Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr al-Khattab, he refused to get involved. But at the end of his life, he was weeping. As mentioned by Imam Ibn Kathir in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya bi Isnad in Sahih. Ask him, what makes ma yub kik? What's making you weep? He said, I didn't join. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Radiallahu anhu. It's the kind of person, even in his old age, he still feels he could have done more. He said in this hadith, in Talaqa, qala sami'tu Rasulullah. We said earlier, when a Sahabi says, sami'tu, that means, and it's from Bukhari and Muslim, it's the most sahih hadith we can have. سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن طلق ثلاثة نفر مما كان قبلكم That there was a group of people, three people, before you. أَوَاهُمْ الْمَبِيتُ إِلَى غَارٍ He said, they were forced to spend the night in a cave. This is something we talked about the first lesson. The Arabs, in their language, they like to name something by what it does. They like to name something by what it does. For example, bait. Why do you call it the bait? We translate itself, but that's where you spend the night. To beat. If you learn that and you're not Arab, you can start to learn Arabic very easily. Because you remember... What does that do? Oh, that must be the name. Ar-Rajul. Why is it called Ar-Rajul? Alain yaqum ala rigli. Why is it called a man? Because a man, he does what? He stands up. Qawm. People. Why are they called people? Because with a group of people, we should have qiyam. Naqum. Ba'duna ba'da naqum. This is mentioned by Imam al-Jurjani in Dalaratul Ijaz. Wish someday we can teach that in America, man. And in that book, he said, this is the nature of the Arab. They name things by what they do. So here, al-bayt, فَلْيَعْبُدُ رَبَّ هَذَا Al-bayt, because the primary purpose of a house is what? Normally, before the industrial era, right? Is to spend the night there. So, al-mabit, here means that they were forced to spend the night in this cave. There's a number of... Uh, you know, discussions about it, but nobody really knows the meaning of or what happened that forced them to go to that cave at night, but they had to spend the night. They had to spend the night in this cave. Also, we take a ruling from this, that if somebody's stranded and they find somewhere to sleep, they can sleep there. Like a cave or something. Oh, I don't own this cave. I can't. Nah, man, just handle your business, bro. Don't die in the rain. Hmm. So they went inside it. And then a rock, a large boulder from the mountain came down. It fell. And it blocked them in the cave. We're going to talk about one thing and then we're going to finish inshallah because of time. فَقَالُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ هَذِي سَخْرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَدْعُوا اللَّهِ بِصَالِحِ أَعْمَارِكُمْ One of them said, the only thing that's going to save us is if we make dua with some good that we did. First guy, he says, قَالَ رَجُلُ مِنْهُمْ اللَّهُمَا كَانَ لِأَبَوَانِ Here we have a very important principle in, in interpretation. Actually, we learn the rules of interpretation before we study tafsir and hadith. In the Azhar, before you read Quran and hadith, you learn usul al-deen. 
In America, before you learn usul al-din, you read what? Quran and hadith. That's why people get confused. Like as we're going to see in this hadith. Because usul al-din gives us the lenses to interpret correctly. وَلَا يَزِرُوا ظَالِمِينِ إِلَّا خَسَارَ The evil people, they interpret the Quran wrong. That's why the Sahaba said, تَعَلَّمْنَا الْإِيمَانَ قَبَلَهَا Al-Quran. We learned iman before Quran. We learned the usul. We learn how to understand the Qur'an before we learn the Qur'an. So here's something very important and we're going to finish inshaAllah. قَالَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْهُمْ And the point I wanted to make is رَجُلٌ they, they didn't mention his name. But you ever taught like Shulta Kaf? And people, what's the first question they ask you? Ya Hamakallah, what's the first question they ask you? You, you read Shulta Kaf. You start to teach the tafsir. What's the first question people ask me? Huh? Uh, Khadr. Wallahi, one time, Sheikh Abdul Sattar Fatullah Sa'id, one of our teachers, he got in a taxi. He has a big, big beard. In a taxi, Sheikh Abdul Sattar, he speaks perfect Arabic, man. Allah, yahfadahu. And he was in the taxi, and the taxi said to him, Ana arif man ant. I know who you are, he said. He said, Hadr like Khadr, alayhi salam. He said, you are Khadr, alayhi salam. He said, Wallahi, I'm not Khadr. He said, la, la, ma zil tahiyyan. You're still alive? You know that strange kind of belief that's out there? This, this, this. And then Sheikh Abdul Sattari pulled out his bitaqa, his ID. He said, read, man. He said, no, no, no. You're just hiding yourself. This is the way of the awliya. They like to hide themselves. That's the first question. Suleiman, sir. Brother Suleiman from Ethiopia, mashallah. Usually people ask what? What kind of dog was it? We have a very important principle in interpretation. If it's not mentioned, don't worry about it. Don't get busy with it. The proof of this is the end of Surah Tahrim. Look at the end of Surah Tahrim where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about وَمْرَأَةَ Nuhi وَمْرَأَةَ Lut, the wife of Nuh and Lut. Does he mention their name? Did he tell you anything about them? He just tells you that their relationship couldn't save them. But the next woman that he talks about, what happens? It goes into detail about Maryam. Why? Because she's important. So sometimes it's okay to ask, but try to stay focused on, on the issue. And I know America likes to tell us, well, you had the question, so it's valuable. No, it's not. That's not some Islam stuff. That's some, because in transmodernity, the altar in Qibla of transmodernity is the individual. Nobody will question themselves anymore. And also the alternative is people don't ask questions. That's another extreme. But here, look. He says, قَالَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْهُمْ أَلَّهُمَّ كَانَ لِي أَبَوَانِ شَيْخَانِ كَبِيرَانِ وَكُنْتُ لَا أُغْبِقُ One of them said, Oh Allah, I had very old parents. Both of my parents were old, very old. Shaykhan, old. Kabiran, here means they were weak. Kabir in sin, da'af. And what? al quwa That's what that means. They were, oh, they were big in their age, but weak in their physical strength. Here we learn something from this hadith, the importance of respect in old parents. And he says, this man, wa kuntu la ughbiq. Ughbiq, it's an interesting word. It means I didn't, I didn't prepare the abiq, the abuq, the ina. I didn't prepare anything to drink before them. I didn't put any food or drink in any vessel before them. That's the meaning of it. He said, that's why he says, uh, Before them, my family or malan, himalan means his slaves, his servants. فَنَعِيبِي طَرَبُ شَجْرِ يَوْمًا فَلَمْ أَرِحْ عَلَيْهِمَا حَتَّى نَامَا فَحَلَبْتُ لَهُمَا غَبُوقَهُمَا فَوَجَدْتُهُمَا نَائِمَيْنَ فَكَرِهْتُ أَنْ أُوْقِضَهُمَا وَأَنْ أَغْبِقْ قَبَلَهُمَا أَهْلًا أَوْ مَالًا فَلَبِثْتُ وَالْقَدْحُ عَلَى يَدَيْ أَنْتَذِرُ اسْتِقَاضَهُمَا حَتَّى بَرَقَ الْفَجْرُ وَصِبْيَةُ يَتَضَاغُونَ عِنْدَ قَدَمَيْ هُنَاكَ رِوَايَ عِنْدَ رِجْلَيْ 
فاستيقظ فشرب غبوقهما اللهم إن كنت فعلت ذلك ابتغاء وجهك ففرج عنا ما نحن فيه من هذه السخرة فانفجرت شيئا لا يستطيع لا يستطيع الخروج منه. We're going to stop here, but I want to explain you something very quickly that's very important about this hadith because there are two parts of this hadith that should cause all of us to say what. The first is this one. He said, and I want new couples to listen to this and, and mother-in-laws and father-in-laws to listen to this because Malcolm X says something very intelligent. In-laws are outlaws. How many marriages are being destroyed by the mother and father-in-law? I'm jealous. She loves him more than... Uh, isn't that what you want? Don't you want a woman to love your son more than you? I'm so jealous. My son, he treats her better than me. But isn't that a proof that you raised him right? Shaitan. Shaitan plays with people, man. And this hadith, sometimes people use it. People come to my office before. My daughter-in-law, my son-in-law is so bad. My son is so horrible. Why? Did you read the hadith about this man? Said, wait, 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 wait. That's why you have to study usul al-din before hadith. Because if you had studied usul al-din, you wouldn't make this mistake. What did he say? He said, I had two old parents. I refused to serve anyone before them. And one day I went out. I became very busy. I'm paraphrasing. And I got back late. By the time I got back late, my parents were sleeping, so I milked the cow and I brought the vessels of milk to my parents and I refused to wake them up. <coughs> and my children were crying at my feet. They were crying. Another narration said they were at my knees begging me and I refused to wake up my parents and give anyone else in my family anything to drink before them, and then he woke up, and they drank, Oh Allah, if I did this for your sake, then please remove this stone. And the stone moved a little, but not enough for them to get out. We have to be very careful here, because this is what we call a sharia min qablina. This is their sharia, not our sharia. In the Mosaic sharia, al-usul muqaddam ala al furu in their law, that your parents are given preference to those that you take through contract. But in Islam, the axiom is the opposite. al furu muqaddim ala al usul So when we read this hadith, we should not, and that's why we say it's not allowed to take istimbat from this hadith. It's not allowed to take a ruling from this, because that's their sharia. Our sharia, who you marry, because you married with a contract. Your children, because Allah has entrusted them to you. And that's why if we go to the books of Islamic law, if this kind of stuff happens, people got rights. And that's also, next week we're going to talk in greater detail about a sharia min qabarina. Because this whole hadith is teaching you about that asal. But of course, the, the purpose the Imam Nawi is mentioning it is because Allah min oh Allah, if I did this, if I did this for your sake, they made tawassul with this ikhlas. Alhamdulillah, they got out. But I want us to leave because I said I'm not going to touch on a lot of fiqh issues, but I know if like the fiqh issue is hot in the streets, right? We, we need to address this. So in, in the mosaic sharia that we know of, al-usul muqaddama ala al far That parents and you know, who you're born into, your family is given preference to, who comes into the family, hukman. By rulings, by contracts, by asbab. The sharia of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we look at Islamic law, we do istiqra of say madhab maliki. If we do istiqra of that, we find that al-furu muqaddama ala usul. You remember this. Because people try to use this hadith to beat you up. You say, wait a minute, that's not for us, bro. The importance of this hadith is intention, not the fiqh. The same thing for the next narration. When the man basically tries to rape his cousin. And he's not punished. That's their sharia. Then in our sharia. Imam Malik in the Mudawwana. He was asked about a man who forces a woman financially to have sex with him. And they're not married. He said, what should happen? He said, you had. You had that. He should be given the had. That's not this sharia. That's our sharia. Not nobody going to hurt nobody. But the point I'm making here is, now you see why I said what I said before we started the hadith. Usul 
before the texts. That's why sometimes when you see people at the bookstore with Bukhari in English, you're like, nah, bro, don't read that, bro. That's not for you, bro. That's the deep lane, bro. And people get arrogant. Are you trying to say I don't know nothing? Absolutely. <laughs> Sheikh Doctor, uh, one of our teachers in Azhar used to say, Yajuzu an yunadi shakhs ya jahil in kana jahilan wa anta aliman. It's allowed to say to someone, you're ignorant if you know they don't know and you know. So here we see something, and it's not anyone's fault. But the, 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 as we think about pedagogy in America, are we teaching usul to Muslims and high school, stu- high school students? We teach them furu. And you can see something. Do we teach them qawaid, principles? Or we teach them al juziyat? Juziyat? The juziyat are important. Can't do this, can't do that, not eat Chick fil A, this, 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 this. Yeah, that's important. But at that young age, we have an opportunity in Islamic schools to layer the level of maturity they have about the deen. That's why I believe Riyadh Salihin should be taught at Muslim high schools. Four years. You can finish Riyadh Salihin. Inshallah, it won't take us four years. Maybe eight. And then we do the Muatta. Inshallah. Khalas. You're good. Muatta will take us about 15 years. But subhanallah, we can see now what I just modeled for you. Vygotsky, if you're a teacher, to study the text without the lenses of interpretation creates problems for people. That's what I like to tell people. You don't have a problem with Islam. You have with a problem of how you see Islam. Imam al-Shawkani says in Irshad al-Fuhul, there's no contradiction in Sharia. The contradiction is in us. And again, in a society where the altar is the human being, it's very difficult for me to say, maybe I'm wrong. And the, the challenge also of the left is the left is at war with Islam, the right is at war with Muslims. But the left say, will pull people away from Islam. And say, you know, the more you get close to Islam, the more it's going to hurt you as a woman. Didn't I just show you right now, if you know this usul and you're a woman, what did you just do with yourself? You just protected yourself. So actually, the protection is where? With the deen. And that's why sometimes the scholars are like, where do Muslims go and all these other isms? Allah said, furudu hu ila Allah. Come back to Allah and His Messenger. But learning takes time. So I want to make this point very quickly. What I said before I started this hadith is we should study the foundations of interpretation along with the text at least, but not the text alone. Because the text alone, we may misinterpret and get scared. Man, how could he have done this to his kids? My God, this is horrible. Call 911, Child Protective Services. Oh my Lord. But if I know the usul, Ah, this is the Sharia before, and the Prophet is what? Rahmatan lil alameen. And this changed. And now I have a mandate as a Muslim to address this problem in my community based on knowledge, not on how I feel. And next week we'll talk about sexual assault. Do you have to really have four witnesses for rape? How is that possible? If you go to any books of madhab, any madhab, you find al ikhtisab Rape. It's not under zina. Where is rape? Under what chapter? In Khalil. Muhtasar Khalil. Al-Jarh. Injury. Because this is an injury. This is not zina. And we saw some people, subhanAllah, even some years ago, if a woman says she was raped or a man says he was raped, they have to bring four witnesses. If I'm being raped, how I have four witnesses? And those four witnesses, then they should be also what? Maqtaraba shayyuta hukmuhu. They should be punished. So this doesn't make any sense. But when ignorance is out there, the, the outcome of ignorance is confusion. But what we're going to talk about next week is, what's the ruling on a, a person that's been sexually assaulted in the Muslim community? Or been mistreated in the Muslim community? What are the rules for that? Number one, it's not backbiting for them to tell somebody. As mentioned by Imam al-Jawhari al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah. Number two, it is an obligation to hide their identity if it's a fact. Satr, awrat al-Muslimin. Third, raf al-ithm anhum. The sin is removed from them. And we'll go through each one. Because we can't just simply say this is wrong and then we don't give people a platform. And that will come in the next hadith, when this in, uh, part of this hadith, 
when the man forces his cousin to have sexual relationships with him, and she said to him, what? Ittaqillah. Fear Allah. But still, this is sexual assault, and he's not punished. In Islamic law, that would be punished. That's the point I'm getting at. Why? Because this is the sharia of those before us. If you understand what I just said now, this, you should write this down. I should study the usul of interpretation before specifically the hadith about law and aqidah. It's going to save me a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. And I will have a much more enriching, personal, rewarding engagement with the text. Not one of, oh my gosh, what's next? What's the next one? Because I know how to interpret. So next week, inshallah, we'll finish with this hadith from this chapter. We'll talk about the sharia. من قبرنا يعني ولم يكن مكلفا بشرعي صلى الله عليه ربنا قبل الوضع يعني about the prophet not being held accountable for the previous sharias until he became a prophet and, and then what does it mean for us to be uh, following the sharia of those before us and some mistakes people make in interfaith with respect to them because I know it's not, it's not hard and also people are left alone man how many MSAs they contact in us? They don't have very few people. Have people like Chaplain Yahya Hindi or Lauren? Or, they don't have that service. So also the Muslims in America have been left. Idhaba anta warabuka faqatila. You go and do this interfaith work. You don't have someone there to teach you. So it's nobody's fault. But we'll talk about it next week, inshallah. Yes, yes, Sheikh. Because this is ta'zib. Yeah, to the kids. Yeah. That's in their sharia, not ours. He's acting on, that man is acting on his sharia. Uh. Absolutely, but he's following the sharia of Musa. It's in their sharia that he have to do that, not ours. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. See now how it, yeah, yeah. No, it's good, it's a good question. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakum khayran wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.